In this video, we are going to show you how to terminate the EasyFlip LC preassembled connector onto a 2mm cable. First, you must identify all the components in the kit. This includes the EasyFlip LC preassembled front body with a dust cap installed, the crimp ring with heat shrink tubing for use on 2mm cable, and a boot. It's worth noting that terminating on 3mm cable follows a very similar procedure but requires a two-step crimp ring instead of the crimp heat shrink combination. You will also need the following tools. Arm and yarn shears, cable strippers, a cleave scribe if necessary, crimp tool CRT708, a heat gun, and a 20 to 21 gauge flexible syringe tip. To begin, install the boot and the crimp ring with heat shrink tubing onto the cable as shown. Measure 45 millimeters from the end of the cable and mark it. Strip the 45 millimeters of cable jacket from the fibers. Cut the excess arm and yarn to about seven millimeters. You can always leave more and trim it later on. At this point, it is recommended to give the fibers and arm and yarn a gentle tug as shown to make sure they are fully relaxed out of the cable jacket. Now, note that the fibers are no longer 45 millimeters because the fibers relaxed some when they were gently pulled in the last step. Strip the 600 micron buffer from the fiber such that there is 31 millimeters of buffered fiber coming out of the cable jacket. It is also recommended to strip the fibers in increments so that they do not break. If there is a 250 micron coating left on the fiber after stripping the buffer, strip that as well. It is then recommended to thoroughly clean the fibers with an IPA dampened lint-free wipe and screen the bare fibers by sweeping them to about 30 degrees in all four directions to ensure their integrity. Something to acknowledge before terminating these connectors is that one can quickly and easily reverse the polarity of them. All you have to do is swing the latch to the opposite side of the connector. There are indicators on both sides of the connector that indicate which way the polarity is aligned. Always ensure a clean syringe tip before inserting it into the tubes of the connector. It is now time to insert epoxy into the ferrules in the connector housing. There are tubes that are connected to the back of the ferrules to help guide the syringe into the ferrule flanges. Since these tubes are slightly curved due to the design of the connector, it is recommended to use a flexible 20 to 21 gauge syringe tip as shown. It may require some twisting and persuasion to get the syringe tip all the way into the ferrule flange. We recommend dry fitting the syringe first. Mark the tip where it stops in order to be able to tell if the tip is inserted all the way into the back of the ferrule. Insert a clean syringe tip into the tube and inject epoxy observing the tip of the ferrule for a small epoxy bead. Once there is a small bead, keep injecting and retract the syringe tip one millimeter to fill the ferrule flange. Repeat this step for the other ferrule always ensuring a clean syringe tip. Now, carefully insert both fibers simultaneously into the tubes, also noting the polarity of the connector. You will want to follow proper guidelines to ensure the proper polarity for your application of your connector. There may be some resistance while trying to insert the fibers into the connector. If you experience this, then you should gently persuade the fibers back and forth until they protrude through the ferrules. Continue inserting the fibers until you feel them stop. The next step is to cure the connector according to the recommended schedules and procedures. After curing, the fiber must be cleaved. This may be done a few different ways, but here we will do it manually by taking a scribe and gently scratching the bare fiber as close to the ferrule tip as possible. Then pinch the bare fibers and pull away perpendicular to the ferrule tip. Always properly dispose of the bare fiber scraps. At this point, we like to use a small brush to evenly spread the armid yarn around the back post. This is because the crimp traps the armid yarn, giving the connector all of its tensile strength. Slide the crimp onto the back post, trapping the yarn as shown. Using the middle cut in the CRT 708 crimp tool labeled BP, clamp completely on the crimp. The image displayed shows the proper crimp region as this will give the connector the most tensile strength. For the 2mm version, collapse the heat shrink tube by evenly heating it with a heat gun. For the 3mm version, 
use the 3 mm cut on the crimp tool to crimp the smaller step of the crimp onto the cable as shown in the figure. Install the boot over the crimp ring and the termination is now complete. Now that the connector assembly is complete, the connector can be polished. If you need more information on polishing your Senko connectors, please contact your local Senko representative. Once polished, it is always recommended to properly clean the connector end face using a proper fiber optic cleaning tool. One of Senko's recommended cleaning tools is the Smart Cassette Cleaner. The proper technique is to scroll the wheel to expose a fresh patch of cleaning ribbon. Gently apply the ferrule end faces on the cleaning cloth and wipe them in the proper wiping direction as indicated on the cleaning cassette. One more feature for this connector is the push-pull tab that can be installed for easier access in hard-to-reach places. All you have to do is slide it onto the latch of the connector from the back. To remove the push-pull tab from the connector, you simply push down on the connector latch from the front and pull the tab off the back of the connector as shown. Now you know how to properly terminate, clean, and use the push-pull tab on the Senko Easy Flip LC pre-assembled connector. If you enjoyed this video or it helped you out, please click the like button, comment your thoughts, and subscribe for more Senko fiber optic content.